more guys. So Daniel, congrats. Are you happy with your first week here at the Australian Open? Yeah, and today was I think the best match because, to be honest, the score doesn't say everything about the match. But it played really good. I, I even want to say it played, I think, in my opinion, better than in US Open, but maybe served a little bit worse. And that's where I took my chances. Um, almost like every game where I could break him, I managed to do it. I think I had two two games where I didn't break him when I had break points, but it was enough today. And yeah, pretty happy about my level. Served well. Uh, didn't get broken even if he had opportunities. Was running pretty well and uh, yeah, was doing some good shots. So happy about my performance and looking forward to uh, to next match. Right, to talk more big picture. Obviously, you've, you come into this tournament as the most recent Grand Slam winner with the US Open and as the number one seed. Um, has that changed your mindset at all? You look like you're somebody that stays fairly relaxed, but has that given you either more confidence or a different mindset knowing that you are the most recent winner and the number one seed? Maybe a little bit more confidence, but the thing is that even when I was, I know, 15 in the world, of course, you know that probably you're not going to win a Grand Slam, but I wanted to win. I hate to lose. I want to win every match I play, uh, but definitely some extra confidence uh, just by knowing that this is possible. Uh, and if not, I mean, every match is, uh, is tough, you know, as I say today, Botic had, uh, for example, opportunities in the end of the first set to come back. It's 5 all. We never know what happens. Who knows? Maybe he wins a tiebreak or whatever. It's one set. Uh, he's one set up. Never the same story. Uh, but again, <laughs> in, uh, in sport, uh, uh, we don't, uh, you know, talk about the past because, yeah, anything could happen. But uh, what happened, happened. Uh, um, so, yeah, I'm feeling just uh, confident and great about my game. But Your next opponent, Maxim Kersi. Um, I'm not sure how much you've seen of him, but he's a rare serve and volleyer uh, in men's tennis right now, which you haven't seen many of in recent uh, years. What do, you, what do you think about that challenge and if that can be an effective style for a, a top player in this uh, era of, of men's tennis? Yeah, I mean, first of all, never played him. And, yeah, didn't he, he still haven't had like too many finals so I didn't watch a lot of his matches but I saw some I remember for example watching in the physio room uh, he beat Karani Busta in the tiebreak of the US Open uh, was was a great victory and that's when you start saying okay he actually can beat uh, you know top guys in a grand slam started this year with uh, with a final now he's in the fourth round of a slam uh, and you know going pretty confident um, we'll have to prepare well, tactically, mentally. Um, I mean, I heard he serves pretty well. So if you don't have a good serve, probably you won't serve in volley and it's not going to be effective. So uh, I do think it's possible, yet yeah, to be a top player like this. But in, like, uh, you know, no matter what you do, slice, serve and volley, return good, uh, you need to, if you want to be at the top, top, you need to try to make it almost perfect. Because other guys uh, will, will will try to break you and uh, your style. So so far he's doing great, I think, in his career. Go. Um, Daniel, you had you had experienced some issues with the crowd the other night. How did you feel today? Do you feel like people are warming to you here? I mean, you've had a lot of support here in the past. It just seemed like a once-off the other night. How are you feeling about it? It's great. I mean, the other night, the, the other night, I don't feel like uh, there was anything like wrong i just talked about exactly one thing which is between first and second serve because the rest is of course they're going to support nick i'm not uh, stupid you know uh, so again i didn't talk about anything the other night except the first and second serve which i still think is uh, yeah you shouldn't uh, sh and I, I actually wasn't wrong in my speech because i said booing but what i meant is that and i saw it in other matches um when you miss the first serve and then there are pretty a lot of guys like applauding like going crazy and that, that shouldn't happen, but of course you can control everybody. And today was great. And <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty funny uh, the, the post-match interview because of course you cannot speak to the crowd, like you cannot uh, you know, uh, have a chat with them for two hours, but that's uh, the only small moment where you can interact with them. And I feel like uh, it's fun. Anyone else in the room? There. We have time for one online question, and Yasmin will take your question, please. 
quite Daniel, just on the thing with the crowd. Obviously, you've had a bit of a love-hate relationship in New York. I'm on a Grand Slam there. Seems like you're having the same character arc here in Australia. Does it help you when you're playing, or do you just not think about it and then get into it during the on-court interview? Yeah, to be honest, I don't think it's uh, the same because the other night I was playing against uh, an Australian uh, player, <laughs> a very you know electric Australian player. And again, as I said, I didn't have any issues except the one small thing, which is first and second serve. And after the match, I think it was yeah straight away pretty actually fun for everybody. That's uh, how I felt, and I didn't see actually a lot of let's say negative reactions. US Open was a different story. I actually was was not doing the right thing in the beginning, managed to, you know, to, to let's say like this, stay calm and turn it around by playing good. Uh, here straight away, you know, this match, I feel, I feel, I like coming to Australia. I feel like people support me in general here. Um, I want to even say, uh, feel in a way like home, you know, every January you are here, you know, that uh, you're going to be there. So uh, I do think uh, it's much more ups uh, than downs uh, with the Australian crowd. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our press conference Thank with Daniil Medvedev. Thank you.